After speaking with Ricky and learning of their new job offer from his boss Corvo Smalley, leader of the 6th Street Gang, Ivo, Ilix, and Lotus agreed to steal some uniforms from the new U Corporation. Well, all we need from you is some new U uniforms and a fucking thumb drive with the code to give them AR access. That's it. During their planning stage, they discovered New U was hiring truck drivers. Ivo decided to take the job as part of the heist. New U needs a driver. And we know a driver. I thought you guys wanted to get this done by Thursday. Look, I kind of know how New U works. They're going to be hiring the first person who has any sort of driving qualifications so that they don't have a stop in their production. In order to get into the new U facility, Lotus had spoken with his father, who was an ex-executive of the corporation. Andy, how can I help you today? Oh, it's uh, great to talk to you, Dad. Haven't seen you in a while. His father agreed to supply a badge, as long as Lotus would do something in return. I need what's called a hive. The hominid incubation vessel. You get me the uh, blueprints, and we'll call it even. With the help of their hacker friend Sketch, Ilix and Lotus broke into the new U facility. Ilix provided a distraction. Steve, my man. All right, so uh, I'm Ilix, and uh, you've heard of my show, right? Ilix Answer. I'm usually on sports, but like I'm kind of branching out. While Lotus stealthily made his way to the central server room. Okay, now when you pass the office, you're gonna go to a ladder. No, wait. It's a service hatch with a ladder, okay? After nearly getting caught, Lotus got what he came for. And then some. You got everything? Fuck yeah, I fucking do. I got other extra shit too. We got fucking all of New Year's fucking files. I created a fucking clone. Holy fucking shit, we're fucking rich. We're fucking rich! And then, some more. There was like a a cybernetic eye that was on display, and you yoinked that thing. Time to Die Podcast Network presents Eclipse, Crater of Corruption. So, Ivo, you are taking the uh, elevated train from um, Collis Hills uh, to the Emerald District so that you can go for your job interview. When you get up to the building, again, it is this massive complex that is 80 stories tall. It's, you know, the, the front is all glass. It's incredibly impressive. And you actually find it pretty easy to follow the directions around to some of the side doors so that you can eventually make your way to where your interview is at. And when you get there, there is uh, this very annoyed looking man who is dressed very corporate. He's got on a suit and his hair is slicked back and you can tell that the that his body modifications are very expensive and almost definitely knew you and he's standing there smoking a cigarette which you know is illegal in Kepler and he's just kind of doing it in the open and uh, when you get up there 
he'll hurriedly look at you and be like, Oh, uh, hey, Ivo, right? Yep, you're, you're Ivo? Hello? That is me. I am Ivo. Fuck yeah, man! Fuck yeah! Fuck yeah, man! Yes! Okay, come on, dude, let's go. Come on inside, and he'll, uh, walk up, and he'll get scanned by this laser. It'll turn green, and the door will open up, and you will walk down this long hallway. Um, everything is this very pristine white color, and then you'll turn a couple of times, and eventually you'll get inside of this large, like, garage area. It's probably 30 feet tall and probably extends for five, 600 feet. Um, it's another like 500 feet wide. It's massive and there are a veritable fuckload of new U vehicles. And he's walking past them and he goes, all right, man. So Here's the first thing that you need to know about new you is you are going to make a new you when you come and get employed by new you. And because you showed up, well, that just shows that you're ready to take the step to make a new you. Are you fucking ready? Because I'm fucking stoked, man. I was expecting an interview, but looks like you just started me. Yeah, man, you're fucking awesome. And I'm so fucking awesome that I can tell when people are fucking awesome, man. All right, well, shit, this didn't go as I as expected. It's much easier, so... Um, Come on, let's get some fucking energy, man! Let's get some fucking energy! <laughs> I mean, when it comes to driving, I got some energy for you. I'm the guy. Give me a fuck yeah, man! Give me a fuck yeah! I'm gonna start tearing my tie off. Fuck yeah! Fuck yeah, man! Are we gonna kick some fucking ass? That's what I'm here for, yeah. It's fucking ass. Or kicking it. He'll... It <laughs> he'll, uh, like, put his hand up to his mouth and he'll kind of whisper, I was hoping you were going to give me another fuck yeah. Yo, fuck yeah. Fuck yeah, man. Fuck yeah. Okay, so we're going to have to take you down to see fucking Bernie and we're going to get you fitted with an algorithm and you are on fucking night shift, bro. And as soon as you pay off your uniform, we can talk about your fucking salary, bro. You're just going to hire me before we talk about payment? Well, because you got to start on your fucking probationary contract, bro. Oh. How long is that? Well, it normally takes people about six months to work off their uniform, but, you know, you could probably do it faster because you're fucking awesome. Oh, boy. What are the uh, check marks I got to check to get through that? We got to be awesome. You got to get my approval you gotta fucking <laughs> pick up extra shifts man you gotta not fuck up you gotta not fucking crash and you gotta fucking get the shit to the fucking place when the shit has to be at the shit okay but that's just for probationary how often do we fuck get paid yeah. how often do we get paid every two weeks man oh that's not so bad fuck yeah Fuck yeah! <laughs> Fuck yeah! <laughs> Fuck yeah, man! Fuck yeah, so which one's mine? Oh, okay, so we're gonna give you a fucking absolute beaut, okay? Fucking brand new, and the guy who drove it before you definitely didn't get murdered. Oh, goddamn. <laughs> Good to know. Glad that it's safe. Yeah, no, super fucking safe. Nobody ever tries to rob new you, man. I wouldn't let him anyway. Fuck yeah, you wouldn't. Fuck yeah, you wouldn't. Ivo, you are my fucking boy. We are fucking boys now, okay? So when Friday comes along and when we all go out for a company drink, I will let you buy me one. All right, one of the boys. One of the boys. And he'll kind of pound on his chest as he says that. So I'm ready to get started whenever you need me. He will lead you down to uh, go and see this guy who's in a white lab coat and um, he's got this almost like a dental chair but very futuristic looking uh, it it basically looks like a cross between like the modern gaming chairs and a dentist chair and mm. <laughs> he the, the guy in the lab coat looks at you and he says uh, yeah you know just uh, just sit down or whatever 
And uh, the corporate guy says, Whoa, Bernie, what the fuck is up, man? We got a new fucking employee, bro. Okay, so I'm going to need you to fucking set him up and then put him on fucking laundry duty. Okay, I'm going to go and catch another <laughs> smoke or some shit. And Bernie will sigh. And uh, you will watch as the uh, other guy leaves and Bernie will say, just sit down in the chair or whatever. So, I'm one of the boys now, huh? You don't want to be one of the boys, trust me. What are we doing here? Uh, give me your input. Alright, uh, sit right down here. And then he will, uh, connect you to this wire that he'll pull down from this, uh, sort of box that's hanging from the ceiling. And he'll connect it, and... After maybe 15 or 20 seconds, um, you'll see some code start to load up on your AR. And then after another moment, you'll see uh, upload complete on your AR. And you'll hear a small dinging noise. And he will unplug you and he'll say, You know, I'm not really supposed to do this, but be careful. Okay? So that bit about the last guy being murdered, that was real? Oh yeah, yeah, we 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 lose people all the time. This tech is really valuable. I thought I was just delivering laundry. Even the uniforms, anything that can get you access. People are desperate. So just be careful, okay? Don't open the door for fucking anybody. We got defense mechanisms, you give pepper spray or some shit. New you will provide any equipment that you should desire, you can look through the catalog, and that only prolongs your probation. Hmm. Can't have that. Well, I'm a pretty good driver. But I'll be careful. Cool. Perfect. Well, um, your vehicle is 113285. 113285. The route's programmed. You just need to follow the coordinates that will load into your AR. Oh. Okay. Easy enough. And again, don't open the door unless you're at a stop. Right. Do we, uh, start tomorrow, or...? No, you're, you're starting now. Oh. Shit. You're on until, uh, let's see, five... 30 right now. You should get done by 8 o'clock tomorrow morning. And these vans have... They have tracking devices and right... Like, should I get mugged or whatever? They, they know where I am and all that. Well, of course. Yeah. I'm gonna let you know right now, though, that they're gonna get the van back and probably not you. No, I understand. I just wanted to confirm that this, these do have GPS tracking on them or whatever. Yes. Yeah. They do. All right, well, get to work. You don't want to be uh, running late. Okay. Um, any other sensors on these things? I mean, I assume that they they really track not just the position, but, like, I mean, if I'm opening windows, doors, unbuckling, driving drunk, all that kind of shit, like, they'll know? Yes, they're going to know. They're plugged into your AR, moron. Right into my AR. Oh boy. Well, that's good. Glad we're safe. All right, I'm gonna go. Okay. And we are not going to roleplay you going through your medial tasks of uh, <laughs> driving around, but you do stop and uh, pick up massive amounts of uniforms, like to the point where you fill up this truck, uh, or this van at, uh, one point towards the middle of the night, and then you start to get directions to take them around to different facilities to take them to be laundered, and, uh, so what would you like to do once you have picked up all of the uniforms? I'm gonna go by the books right now and do a standard delivery, and it's not until after my shift and I've already left the van and facility that I would call any of my buddies. Okay. I would definitely call him before his shift is over. 
I wouldn't answer. <laughs> Go straight to voicemail or whatever. What are you doing right now, Lotus? I think Lotus is like pacing around the garage, like talking at Jason the whole time. Like, man, I don't know. There was alarms, man. Uh, you think I ever got the job? Fuck yeah. Like, he, he had to be able to get the job, right? Like, they need someone and he can drive, right? He can drive. I've seen it. Technically. Just, oh, fuck, man. Like, uh, Sketch said he got everything or a lot or like a lot of everything. Fuck, man. Like, Jason. I, I'm assuming Jason is, like, trying to work on the cars as I'm doing this. Yeah, he'll, um, after, after you've been doing this for a considerable amount of time, he'll stop and he'll say, Look, man, you just, just, just need ch- chill. J- just chill, okay? Fuck. Fuck, okay, um, do we have any side panels I can paint? Painting helps me relax. Yeah, um, and Lotus, it is probably 5.30, maybe pushing on 6 o'clock, and you get, um, you get a file sent to you from Sketch. Does it, does it have, like, a, any labels on it before I open it, or? Um, it does not. It just is a zip file that you could execute if you wanted to. Okay. Let's see what he got. I go back to pacing as I open it. You will immediately see just thousands and thousands and thousands of lines of code, and you'll see just window after window start to open up. Like, you'll see schematics. You'll see just all sorts of things. Like, you'll see, you know, biomechanical arms, biomechanical eyes, you even, for a split second, see something that uh, has the initials um, H, I, V, and then a little E at the end of it, and it will say Hominid Incubation Vessel. Does, like, more stuff keep opening? Oh, yeah, yeah, it just, like, okay. keeps flying past that. Yeah. Uh, I just, uh, I stop the, uh, the download and then just, like, control F to jump back to the H-I-V-E kind of muttering like the the E's a good that's a good choice that's a strong choice (laughs) and you will notice that it looks to be almost like an artificial uterus you use to grow humans alright that's fucking weird why the fuck would the old man want this shit oh actually um, as I kind of flip through it, do I see anything about cloning at all involved with it, or...? Absolutely. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that tracks. He's probably gonna try and make a little him to take over his business. Or hobby, I guess. Maybe he's gonna make a whole army of himself, so he can carve whole fleets of boats. Doesn't concern me any. Okay, at least we got that. Um, uh, I'm going to call up Sketch quick. Just um, It goes to voicemail. Hey, you got Sketch? Uh, leave a message after it beep. Otherwise, I guess, you know, don't expect me to call you back or anything like that. <laughs> I'll, I'll leave him a short one. Just uh... Actually, if it goes to voicemail, I'll probably just shoot a text after just like, uh, uh, received thanks... Uh, and then, like, a winky kissy face. <laughs> and, um, so yeah, well, uh, okay, so, Jason, 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 listen, Jason, it, it looks like we got it. Um, they, everything. We got possibly their entire database. Wait, What? Yeah, I don't know. Sketch is a lunatic. Um, he might have just copy-pasted literally everything onto this drive. We cannot let Corvo know that we have all of this, okay? Yeah, 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 no, that's probably for the best. 
That means no telling your cousin. Oh, right, 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 right. right. Okay. But, but, but what if what what if he asked for for an update? Tell him we got what he needs. Yeah, d- 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 that makes sense. Yep. Yeah. Okay, yep. man. Yeah. Yep. <sighs> Honestly, I don't. I don't know that we should tell the other two that we've got all of this. Too. This is not something that people should know that we have. Like, may- maybe we keep this between us. Yeah, yeah. If, if New You finds out, they're gonna fucking kill us. Right. Yeah. We don't want to drag them into it. We got, we got the files we need. Sketch grabbed a little extra for himself. That's it. Wait, 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 wait. wait. So Sketch is probably g- gonna auction it. <laughs> I mean, if he's smart, he's not going to. If he auctions that, New You will find that auction. Track him down and decorate his walls with what used to be inside of him. Fuck, man. Yeah, well, Sketch is probably smart enough not to do that. Like, if he was smart enough to grab all this and not get immediately caught, he he is going to use it when he needs it, and that is it. Fair enough, man. Fair enough. About this time, Helix comes in. And I've got my arms, like, full of, uh, like, brochures and pamphlets and, like, um, the sort of, like, visitor goodie bags from New You and as much stuff as they would have given me to get me the fuck out of there. Literally anything for free. Like, anything that they give out for free, they would go and find. So, like, you have t-shirts, like, you have hats, like... You have all sorts of swag, like anything to get you to leave and shut the fuck up. Like they were desperate. Hey, yo, boys, look at all this shit. They would have given me the bathroom sink to get me out of there. And I go and just throw it all on the table. I cannot believe that you did such a good job. I thought they were going to yell at you and just throw you out immediately. Well done. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yeah, man, this press badge almost lets you get away with murder. <laughs> uh, well, I guess I'll throw the free swag I got in there, too, and I'll pull out the eyeball and throw it onto the table. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> yeah, you get one of those? It was just like, there, I don't know. I guess they were a little busy, but... Uh. Yeah, like, I, um, like pick it up and like hold it up to my own eye and then like my eyes go really big for a second and I'm like oh shit and I put it down on the table and throw um, <laughs> a shirt over it like maybe we shouldn't have brought that here like has it been out in the open has it seen much in here this isn't like activated yet it's it's just tech right now like oh phew yeah don't worry like if it was something that they needed they wouldn't have left it out Maybe it was their yeah. last driver. <laughs> oh. Um. Have you talked to Ivo at all? I tried to call him, and he didn't respond, so I'm, he, I mean, he, he's probably fine, right? That's normally what it means. Yeah, I guess. I, I mean, did it just, like, ring and ring and ring and ring, or did he, like, purposely move it over to voice band? Um... It rang a little bit, and then it, it cut off. So I, I think he was probably, like, driving, and maybe he, he hit stop, like, when he got to a stop sign or something. I don't know. It, it, it wasn't like it just kept ringing. Oh, okay. Yeah. He's probably mad at us for making him do his part alone. Well, uh, good news. I just got a uh, word from Sketch. Um, we got what we need. We got the shit for Corvo. We got the shit for my dad. Sweet. Awesome. You got the, the weird little monkey thing that he needed? Um, what? Monkey? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, the, the hominid thing. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Those are monkeys, right? Um, it's more like clones. I think my dad's trying to make a dad army. I'm not certain. We're making monkey clones? I guess he could clone a monkey in it. Man, the moon is going to be lit in a couple of years. <laughs> yeah. He doesn't have, like, a production line for it, though, so, like, I don't know what he's gonna use it for, but, um, 
Sketch said he was able to, uh, to grab a little bit of extra kind of like projected upcoming tech that they haven't gotten around to testing yet. Um, but he's gonna he's gonna try and like sell one of those blueprints and like that should cover our debt with him. Sweet. Yeah, things are finally starting to come together. Yeah. I like go down, go over to a, like one of the couches and just like plop down and put my feet up on the armrest. Are you guys going to wait um, at the garage then until you hear from Ivo? Yeah, it's either this or catch a train and go to sleep in one of the pods in there. Perfect. Well, then uh, it is 8 a.m. the next day, Ivo, and you are done with your first uh, shift at New U. I give Lotus a ring back as soon as I get to the train station. Uh, yeah, hello. You've reached the voicemail of Lotus. Why didn't you answer my call? This now your voicemail, is it? No, it is obviously not. Ivo, what the fuck were you doing? We got a problem. <sighs> another problem? Ilix, <laughs> Ivo says we have another problem. How many vans did you wreck? Yeah, uh, yeah I heard, I heard, I heard. Okay, okay yeah. Um, he wants to know how many vans No, I heard, I, I, I heard that's... Yeah, I wanted I, to reiterate no, that, I, because how do you have another problem? Look, I thought, you know, maybe they have a GPS tracker. No, they monitor your AR. Like you plug in, and they see everything. I don't know how we're going to pull suits off this truck. That is the easiest part, Ivo. Jesus Christ, I thought... I thought you got, like, your car stolen, or, like, they broke your knees for fun or something. I don't know. Rich people are weird. Or you didn't get a job, that would actually be more likely. And then you were trying to have Hannah console you or something. We're just friends. We- <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm glad you can keep your sense of humor. Oh, I didn't have any problem getting the job. What's so I easy know. about it? It's so easy. We still have the employee chips, so we just need you to be delivering some of the uniforms, and then you let me know where you'll be delivering. I will come into the plant, tell them that I am doing a routine survey, and I am going to take three of the suits and tell them that we will have Kind of like a, a like a quality check, you know? I have to take them back, you know? Easy. <laughs> if you say so. I'm just glad you're doing it. we can have Alex do it. He's, he's good at talking. He, he could pass as like, a, as like a quality inspector, I think, yeah? You can have Hash do it for all I care, as long as it's not me doing it. I'm good with driving, and you guys can handle the rest. That's fine with me. Yeah, like, it, you just do your job, and then, like... When you take your break or whatever, just tell us like, next delivery going here, and 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 we'll one of us will meet me, you know. Hmm. All right. I just gotta say, I heard you guys bringing up my name as far as impersonation and stuff. Not a good idea, seeing that my face is well known, or at least like can be easily found through the databases and stuff. So maybe just keep me to be in what I'm good at. Yeah, no, no, good point, good point. Just, yeah, I... Love you. <laughs> what if we, we, we asked Ricky to put a gun in Ivo's face and just take the truck? Um... No, I'm cool. <laughs> That's a great idea. I'm like still yelling from sitting on the couch and just yelling over the back of the couch. <laughs> I'm like, am I on speaker? Can they hear me? Uh, don't worry about that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we could have Racer X steal it. The problem is, if we have Ricky steal the truck, they're gonna know that it was Ricky who did it because of the because of the the neural jack, right? Racer X. Racer X. We Racer don't need X. a truck full of suits, you guys. We just need like three. Right? Yeah. Um. I think they said three. Well, like extras couldn't hurt. Yeah. 
So if if the you know if the processing plant audit doesn't work, we'll go with the hijacking. Um, because because that's a good option. That's a good alternative. This was all going so well. Nothing ever goes in my favor. What are you talking about? We've got everything we need. You've got a truck full of uniforms at your disposal. You know? I was kind of hoping that this could turn into a real deal job, because I certainly need the money. Apparently I'm going to fucking lose it the first day because we're going to steal a fucking van. <laughs> Only as a last resort. Okay. You know? Okay. And like, who knows, maybe you could keep this up as a real job after we, um, you know, have helped plunder New Year's shit, but... Don't you think there are better companies to be working for? God damn it. I'm sending you my schedule. You can figure out the best place to take over. Love you, boo. I'm going to bed. <laughs> oh, he freaks out about the littlest things. I know, seriously, man. Maybe coffee isn't the best thing for him. Yeah, maybe we need to get him, like... Maybe he needs to have a drink. I mean, nothing goes better than drinking and driving. I mean, it couldn't possibly make him crash more. (laughs) (laughs) Ilix, you get a message. And it is coming from the new you corporate office. And... When you open it up, it says uh, that you are cordially invited um, for an interview. Um, Just email back when you are next available. Can't do it Thursday. Uh, How about next Monday? Early in the morning. Uh, You email that back and you get an immediate response that uh, says uh, Monday, 8 a.m. All right, cool. So, Lotus, you would see that there are, um, there is one pickup in Collis Hills, um, and it's kind of right on the border. It's a subsidiary of New U, um, that would be known as, it's actually a gold arm facility, but, uh, it's heavily guarded, but it is in Collis Hills, so it would be closer, um. It's kind of up to you. Do you want to look for something that would be in a different part of Kepler, maybe? Or do you want to be closer to your home where you would know the environment better? I would go with uh, closer to home. So the Gold Arm facility it is. You wouldn't know exactly when Ivo would get there then. Um, You could try and uh, set it up with Ivo for him to be making that delivery around a certain time if you would like, or you can... Go and lay and wait. I guess it's kind of up to you. I think he would just uh, go and and wait. If he's coming from the new you garage, I would guess that it would be maybe not near the start of his shift, but not too far in. So here's the other problem is uh, what it's Wednesday morning at this point. If tomorrow is bridge night. Yeah, okay, perfect. Okay, then, yes, it is. So then Ivo would be going to work um, this evening because he works uh, third shift. I am just going to hop on my AR and sort of uh, try to look up the um, the info for Tim Timerson and just uh, if I can get any contact information and, and stuff and try to figure out how way to meet him. Do you have any uh, moves that would specially relate to that, or should I just have you roll research? So I have... Would a side quest count as the start of a mission, or no? Um, yeah, fuck it. What's the... What's the move? Okay, so I would roll edge, and, um... Depending on what I get, uh... It would either give me three holds, or one hold, or, uh... None. 
Okay. So that's um, uh, 10 on the die plus my edge is plus one. So um, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and use uh, a question for the research list. And um, what do I have to do to get uh, Tim Timerson's information? You would have to go down to Econolux. All right, go to Econolux. Kind of figured I'd have to do that anyway. And then I'm going to save the other holds for when I'm like actually there. I'm not going to um, do this today, though. I just want to have this ready to go for when when we do do it. Like, um, but yeah, I am kind of still fixated on making sure that we get this uh, this job done so we don't get killed or in jail. Sounds good. Okay, then we will fast forward. Ivo, you. Uh take the train and make your way down to New U and uh, you get into your truck and or your van I guess we should call it um, and you begin your route before I jack in I'm going to text Lotus and say that I'm starting my shift he will send back a thumbs up I will write back and say um, this is my last chance to message you when should I arrive be there in 30. Okay, I'll return the thumbs up and then I'll uh, jack in. Yeah, you would pretty much have to start heading there immediately if you're going to be there in 30 minutes then. That's what I'll do. All right, cool. So um, you would arrive at this facility and when you get to the gate, like you don't even have to do anything. Like it just recognizes that um, your van is supposed to be there and uh again those like red laser scans that sort of turn green and uh it opens up and you can actually see that there are these um flashing arrows that are on the on the road that sort of lead you around and you can see in your ar like floating above the arrows that it's uh that it reads dock you know and so you know to go and back and dock your van up to the um up to the loading area there, and uh, Lotus, you would also see that uh, Ivo's van pulls into the front of this facility, and like I said, it is very well guarded. Um, However, it looks like all of the defenses are automated. Um, You don't see any people. Um, Ivo, you would see some people that are getting ready to, you know, load and unload the back of your van, but... um, Lotus, not at the front of this facility, you know, around like these laser fences and things like that. Like it's just all turrets and and cameras and things like that. Do they have like a front door or like a visitor's entrance at all? Um, yeah, you would have probably had enough time to stake the place out. And so, yeah, you would have, uh, you would have found that there is, um, an employee entrance like it doesn't seem like this place is meant for visitors you know what i mean but there is a place where vehicles aren't coming in it looks like it's meant for foot traffic there's like a kind of footbridge that then goes above um the driveway that um ivo would have taken i will uh make my way there and uh see if my (laughs) new you employee badge works here um you walk up and you get scanned by this red laser it goes up a couple of times and you have this large bead of sweat drop from your temple down to the side of your cheek and then it turns green and the door slide it's not a door it's just kind of a smaller gate it just slides over to the side Um, it's got a cantilever to open it okay um Right. Uh, from where I am, do I see anybody here, or can I just kind of walk into the building? It looks like you could just take these catwalk, um, like these catwalks, go to all sorts of different uh, areas of the building, and like as soon as you would step onto it, you would see that there are um, different colored glowing arrows that um, your AR would identify. Uh, you know, lead to administration to the loading areas. Um, various other departments and things like that and so yeah you would be able to easily just take one of these catwalks down towards the loading docks if you'd like uh that is exactly what i would like to do okay so you start hurrying your way and you can see that ivo is uh just kind of sitting in the front seat of this van as uh as some gold arm employees go uh 
putting some uniforms in the back and they grab out a crate that uh, you would imagine has um, some of the freshly laundered ones that he may have uh, brought from a different facility or something like that. And so what would you like to do? Uh, ignoring Ivo, I'm going to walk up to some of the people unloading and say, uh, excuse me there. Hi, I'm from the new uniforms quality assurance division just have to do some routine QA checks gonna have to take a couple of these uniforms off your hands make sure that everything's ship shape I didn't hear anything about any uniform inspections well I wouldn't expect uh, standard laborers to be informed about every quality check. If you were, then you could just make sure that the good ones were there when I came. Yeah. All right, man. All right. Uh, Here, hold on. And he'll um, walk back into an office that's sort of off to the right from this loading area that he's in. Like, you can see that there are some uh, very futuristic looking forklifts, but still forklifts just the same. Um, that are kind of resting next to it and he'll come back out and he's got this small device and he just says go ahead and give me your administrative key I'll uh hand him my little uh chip to scan yeah you pop it onto um, his little scanner it's got like a little node for it to receive it and it kind of whirs for a few seconds and then uh, green light flashes, and he offers it back to you. All right, I'm gonna need uh, five of these uniforms for base inspection checks, and then I've got to take three of them back with me. Gold arm or new you or some of both? Um, specifically new you. Gold arm might be coming in in a couple of days. All right. And he'll uh, look over at one of the other guys and nod, and he'll uh, reach into one of the um, fresh crates, and he'll rip open the plastic uh, seal that's around them, and he will hand you five individually plastic-sealed uniforms. I go through a, a great show of, like carefully inspecting like the seams on the plastic bags and like making sure that everything's ship shape. Oh at this point these dudes do not seem to give a shit about what you're doing. Like they're just trying to get the stuff off of this van and get Ivo back on the road because that is their job and they will get severely punished if they don't. Perfect. Then eventually I will hand two of them back to the guy and say uh alright these seem to be an alright condition, but uh, I gotta take these to make sure the uniforms themselves are good. Um, yeah, okay, just hold tight a second, I guess, and he'll uh, run back into the office to get that little scanner again, and uh, he goes, alright, just give me an authorization, please. Mm -hmm. Of course. You'll put your little chip onto the receptacle again, and... It will whir for a few more moments, and then it will flash green, and what would you like to do then? I'm going to uh, write off almost like a receipt that says, like, quality assured check uh, complete Mm -hmm. pass, and I, like, hand it to him and be like, all right, here you go, and, uh, like, walk past him as I hand it to him. Uh, he'll close up the doors and he'll bang on the top of the van and uh, yell up to you, Ivo. All right, you're good to go. I'll start her up and pull away. And so, Lotus, uh, you start walking these catwalks then, I assume, heading back to the garage at this point? Yeah, and at least while I'm, like, on the catwalks, I'm, like, making a great deal of noise about, like, what a pain in the ass it is. Like, having to come out all the way here just to check uniforms. Just really trying to make people be like, oh, this dude doesn't even like his job. (laughs) All right. (laughs) 
Lotus, you would uh, get back to the garage. Elix, are you still at the garage at this point, then? I would have probably, uh, you know, kind of gone around town a couple loops on the, the train and come back at some point. Okay. So, yeah, I'm probably, like, sitting on the couch, like, uh, doing the thing where I'm, I'm, like, laying down and, like, throwing popcorn up into the air and trying to catch it in my mouth and missing most of them. Yeah, Jason's just been working on the vehicles and uh, kind of ignoring you, so. Missing the popcorn is all the more embarrassing by the fact that gravity is so much lighter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I didn't even think about that. That's great. <laughs> so Lotus will, uh... I'll just walk in through the door, though, and kind of, like... Uh, holding the uniforms like a princess, carry. <laughs> oh, fuck! Yes! You got him, man! Gosh, it was boring as fuck in here, man. Yeah, I told Ivo it was gonna be a piece of cake as soon as he got that job, but... If he wants to worry about every little thing. How funny is that? That he's, like, actually working this job and he's just driving around and <laughs> delivering fucking uniforms. What an idiot. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, maybe once all this blows over, I'll actually do quality assurance. Seems really easy. They don't actually seem to make sure that you're doing a job. Yeah, speaking of seams, did you check them? Did you check them real good? Oh, uh, that's what these are for, bud. And I, like, throw them on the table. and <laughs> I'm going to try one on. Uh, are we gonna take this stuff to Corvo tonight? Uh, yeah, we should get it, like, you know, out of the way. Just get this all said and done with. I mean, we should probably wait for Ivo to get off of work, but, um, you know, so I guess it'll be early morning. But these people never sleep. They're on probably some sort of moon coke or something. There's no way Corvo's gonna see us at 9 o'clock in the morning. Um, I guess we go now, then. I mean... I can c call Ricky to come and pick us up if you wanted. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah, can't wait for, uh, for Ivo for everything. He probably wouldn't even want to go along anyway. Yeah, he'd probably crash us all to our deaths on the way over there. M m maybe we should... Stop with the p p p prophecies about Ivo c crashing. I want this car to last this time, man. Yeah, you're right. You're right. And I, I walk over and kind of pat him on the back. <laughs> um, you'll see his eyes will glow as though he is uh, doing some stuff with Zayar, and uh, he'll be doing that for maybe the next, I don't know, two or three minutes, and uh, then he'll say, uh, all right, Ricky's on his way. He should be here soon. Well, get that thing off of you, Alex. Come on, <laughs> get it back well, in the bag. How do I look? <laughs> I like kind of do a spin in the jazz hands. <laughs> you look like a real prick, bud. But most of that's the new you uniforms. Oh, that's so kind of you. All right, I'll start taking it off. <laughs> Don't worry, only most of it. Uh, Ricky would show up shortly after then um, in a uh, actually relatively nice looking car. Um, it's a Triune Industries. Um, it looks like it's been kind of uh, Frankenstein together. Um, there are definitely parts from other vehicles on it, but overall it's still, you know, all the paint is matching. Um, he's got these. Uh, chromey uh, rims on it. Like, it's a, you know, decent looking vehicle and he'll uh, kind of get out and be like, alright guys, come on, like, let's fucking go! And, uh, like, he'll rev the engine a little bit uh, with his AR as he says that from outside the vehicle. Is it a convertible? Yeah. I'm, I'm gonna do the kind of, like, hop on the rear quarter panel and, like, slide into the back seat kind of thing. Quick question for you, Lotus, and this is actually a courtesy. 
Uh, have you separated any of the information uh, that you're planning on giving to Corvo yet? Yes. I had meant to bring that up at the start. Gotcha. <laughs> Actually, I meant to say that last week, but yeah. I just want Corvo to be getting for the one thing he asked for, and then I want a separate thumb drive uh, of just the hive information to give to my dad eventually, and then everything else on the actual, like, service chip that I Original have. from, uh, okay. From, from uh, sketch. sketch. Yeah. Gotcha. Um, Ricky drives fast. Um, third lanes, people, when you guys are at red lights, like, he's weaving in and out of traffic, and he's laughing maniacally, like, he's got this really loud driving bass sort of techno playing on the radio as he's going, and every once in a while, he'll, uh, shout something inane over the over the music like man fucking a lot of power right and just you know just incredibly inane (laughs) things like that and then eventually um you will get to an area of collis that none of you usually willingly go and you can see that a lot of the people have these um have these body modifications and And they all seem to be wearing, you know, these very uh, bright neon colors, but this, like, bright blue tends to overpower the rest of it, and it's then that you realize that you are thoroughly in Sixth Street territory at this point. And the people here are so brazen that the majority of them are openly carrying automatic weapons. Like, you see actual large artillery that is mounted on top of some of these vehicles. Like, these people look like they could actually give Bordsec a run for its money. Not for a long time, but in a short skirmish or something along those lines. And as you continue through these neighborhoods, you eventually get to this sort of palatial-like estate, but it's been... It looks like at one point it was, you know separate homes on one block but at this point they've all been cobbled together but not so poorly that it looks ramshackled but poorly enough that it's easy to tell that this was once its own separate thing and you see that there are so many people outside some of them are drinking some of them um you can see have set up bottles and they're you know, shooting rows of them off of various things. Um, There are people dancing, and there's loud music everywhere, and again, this predominant blue color is worn by the majority of these people. For the most part, the only people that aren't wearing the color happen to be women. And as Ricky sort of leads you inside of this place, you uh, walk through one of these... um, formerly apartment buildings and you kind of just make your way through the hallway and then when you get beyond the the apartment complex you get into this giant courtyard and in the center of it there is this sort of raised platform and you see a bunch of people are sort of dancing and drinking and shouting and different things like that but you also notice that slightly higher than the rest of them is this large bear of a man with these facial modifications that make him look way more robot than even Ricky, who has some very garish modifications. He has this very modern, uh, urban chic look, except for his jacket, which, uh, Ilix, you would recognize as the number eight racing jacket. Um, Katie Barnes would have, uh, would have worn that, uh, that number and and flown those colors back in the day when he was still alive and racing and so that is something that you would probably know and Ricky brings you closer and as you get up to the dance floor um, Corvo will notice Ricky is uh, bringing you close and uh, Corvo will motion for somebody next to him it is this very slender short woman she's got this spiked vest on and like this and half shirt with like this neon makeup again most of it is blue she also has this golden cyber arm that uh goes like up into her shoulder and kind of in her chest as well and uh she 
turns off the music and things get pretty quiet. And uh, Corvo looks at you both and says, So I'm told that you have solved my problem. We got it right here, and I hold up the, the uniforms. Oh, and your thing. And I kind of look over towards uh, Lotus. Lotus will hold up the the flash drive uh, <laughs> a lot less enthusiastically than, than Ilix is being. Well, fuck. I'm fucking impressed. So am I. Look at your jacket. Oh my god, like, I'm a huge KD fan too. You are, are you? Yeah, like, uh, I don't know if you know me, but I'm like a, you know, sports reporter and trying to, you know, kind of branch out into some other stuff, as you can see. But, like, you know, oh, gosh, that guy was a legend. Yeah, well, we can talk more about KD once I see what information you have. All right? Yeah, yeah, sure thing. Also, speaking of drivers, you got a hell of a driver right here, and I point over to Ricky and kind of, like, lean over and tap him on the shoulder. Yeah, he's all right. Come on, bring me the drive. Yep, sure thing. Uh, here you go, man. Um, should be everything you asked for. All right. He'll hand it over to the lady with the golden arm, and, uh... You'll see that she'll slot it, and uh, her AR works for a moment. You can see her eyes glowing as it does, and then she goes, yep, and hands it back to Corvo, and uh, Corvo says, Well, fuck me. Now, I have to say that while I am incredibly impressed, I am even more impressed with how quickly it was done. Fantasia, give him a 20% bonus. What? Like, my mouth goes open. I look like um, Post Malone in that one gif of the girl flashing him. (laughs) You will see this uh, woman. She'll uh, slot a different uh, drive this time, and you'll notice that these are this is a cred chip, and she'll slot it for a second, and then she'll toss it to you, Lotus. Uh. 120... Oh, uh, thank you very much. Um, we got a bit lucky with the timings. Everything kind of aligned schedule-wise for us. So glad we could do this for you so uh, so quickly. Yeah. Walk with me. Okay. And he'll get up and uh, he'll put his arm around uh, both of you and start walking you across the courtyard and you'll notice that the music will go back on in the background and and people will kind of return to what they were doing and they'll say you know how I got to this position that I'm in lots of hard work and elbow grease by knowing to not let people go when they're accomplishing good work yeah I can see that too and y'all boys did good work If you're enjoying the show, we'd be so grateful if you'd spread the word. Whatever you can do to let people know we exist and you think we're worth a listen. All the content from Time to Die Podcast Network can be found by visiting timetodierpg.com. Find us on Twitter at Time to Die RPG, on Reddit at r slash Time to Die RPG, on Instagram at Time to Die RPG. Tim the GM is on Twitter at Ida Grab Your Gun. Chris who plays Ilix is at Chris Riley LCP. Eric, who plays Lotus, is at ES underscore Patty Cake. And I, Brian Bridges, the player of Ivo, am at Manly Brian. Thanks for listening. We'll see you for the next chapter of Eclipse, Crater of Corruption. Corruption.